playing in the studio and at live events have their pros and cons. I prefer playing in LA more than I prefer playing here. It feels a lot more at home when I play it in LCS. I really enjoy this type of setting because you can interact with the fans, you can actually meet them. We can't exactly practice here because it's an open area in front of all the other teams. Having a live crowd is always uh, more intimidating, like there's, there's a little bit more pressure on there. It's definitely, I think, easier for our team to play when we're back in LA. Uh, our schedule's a lot uh, synced up together. I actually like a quiet environment where I can just think and uh, plan out things carefully. I prefer there to be a crowd because when you're winning, it's very, very motivating. I know a lot of people have stage fright, and I don't, so I actually prefer here. Since they have a disadvantage, it kind of gives me an advantage. This whole place is just really loud, and so I'm actually a lot more comfortable at the right studio. I like playing in front of a loud crowd, but, uh, like you can hear them right now. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the North American LCS. I'm Lee Damon Smith, and here with me is Sam Harmon, Kobe Kensler. <laughs> Getting a bit of everything in there. It's like a mix of all of it. We had a very exciting day yesterday, despite the dramatic shakeup in TSM's roster. They still came out on top with their new substitute, Wild Turtle. He was pulled off the first NA seasonal pentakill. It was amazing stuff, and if you caught it, it was brilliant. And you, if you'd missed it, well, where the hell were you? Yeah, they start off really strong. Two wins for them, and the question now is, will Doublelift be able to tame the wild turtle? <laughs> Everybody's wondering, with all the drama going around with Chaos. Dignitas, though, they also had two wins, looking really strong themselves. Meanwhile, Marn, two more losses means that they're on a six-loss lose streak. Yeah, it's been an interesting day yesterday, of course. Let's take a closer look at everything else that happened here yesterday. The first match of the day featured two struggling teams. Marn was coming in off of a four-game losing streak while Dignitas had dropped two of their last three. Dignitas got off to a good start, winning a four-for-two exchange near Dragon behind a double kill from I'm a Cutie Pie's Caitlyn. Oh, I'm a Cutie Pie picks up one. He's going to pick up a second on Heartbeat as well. And Dignitas come out on top of that one, four-for-two. Scar continued his outstanding play on Diana, picking up a double kill to give Dignitas the ace. One more shot on towards Harpeet, he's gonna go down, he's gonna get dropped, and now they're piling in. Echo, but they're all in the Defile right now. Echo will go down, there's still gonna exit from this Defile. Here's gonna become the Requiem, will it do enough damage? Scar is ultimate, just finishing up there. Crumbs picks up another kill. The Ents on top of the side, has to use his ultimate, but he's gonna get taken down. Scar comes in, it's a double kill and an ace for Dignitas. Dignitas was able to shut down Marn's late game comp early giving them a victory. The second match of the day featured TSM playing with a new AD carry this week as Wild Turtle took over the duties from Chaos. Despite giving up first blood, Complexity was able to keep themselves in the game because of the play of Nick Wu's Zed. Oh, he tried to go aggressive on towards Wild Turtle, does finish to pop him down. Deathmark has gone down on him. He oh, will get man. popped, absolute explosion there, and he gets the double kill as X Special goes down. Nick Wu was on fire, picking up a triple kill just after Complexity had secured the Baron buff. It is TSM dropping like flies right now. It's a double kill for Nick Wu. It's a triple kill for Nick Wu. And that is an ace for Complexity. Just when it looked like Complexity was in control, TSM was there to turn them away. Here comes Reginald. He gets the stun card, but Chupa pops on his hourglass straight away. Brunchu is there. The rest of the team going to go. Crescendo on towards Chupa. Nick Wu running in. They turn on towards Reginald. He's used the Zonia's hourglass just at the right time. Loud and is around there at the moment. Has him got Curse of the Sad Mommy available. Reginald's solo. Here comes Nick Wu. He's going to join the fight just as Brunchu comes in there. But Wild Turn, he's picked up a triple kill for his team. Goes for the ace and a hole on Brunchu. Doesn't land it. But what a great turnaround from Team Solo mid. It was extremely close throughout the game, and it was the newcomer Wild Turtle with the play of the day to close the game out for Team Solo Mid. Wild Turtle at the back, just hitting, hitting one after the other. There's a double kill for him. Loud Amonis goes in, that's gonna feed him a triple kill. MIA Strand, that's gonna be a quadra kill. Can he get the Penta kill? Brunch you, one on one, it's gonna be the Penta kill. That is the game for Team Solo Mid. Wild Turtle did a great job filling in for Chaos, and his Penta kill carried TSM to the win. The third game of the day featured a rematch between Dignitas and Counter Logic Gaming. Crazy action started out this one as Dignitas was able to turn a 3v4 gank into a 3-on-1 exchange. Oh, the flip comes 
in. Now double lift gets turned on. Cutie Pie's gonna chase on this one. Crumbs is gonna get in. He's already used the flip. There's gonna glitter lance from Aphromoo. They turn on towards Aphromoo instead. Aphromoo's gonna get taken low. Piltover Peacemaker is back up. There's the flip again. Piltover on towards double lift. Wow, crazy action, and it's 3-1 with Dignitas taking the lead. It was total domination from Dignitas, and they look to be back on track after their second victory of the day. And it's going to be Dignitas picking up a convincing victory over Counter Logic Gaming. Crumbs was the bear that just didn't care, and his play on Vully pushed Dignitas to their second win over CLG on the season. In the last game of the night, Marna's looking to prove that their win over TSM during Super Week was not a fluke. Mine started the game out with first blood when Mega Zero's Elise took down Dyrus' Malphite. They've got a cocoon on Dyrus. Are they going to follow this one up? One more ignite should be enough. Well, they finish it off. Yes, they will. Mega Zero comes in. First blood goes down, and it's Marn that pick it up. Things would turn quickly for TSM after Wild Turtles Draven invaded Echo's blue buff. We can see Echo on it. He's taken very oh. low. X Special's going to come around. Glitterlands comes out. They do manage to get on towards Marn. Echo straight away down, and the blue buff back to Wild Turtle. That's horrendous. DSM continued to roll. Mega Zero far too quick with the uh, oh. cocoon there, but oh, Dyrus comes in, catches him, full stretch there, an unstoppable force just rips Nianton so away. And TSM would go on to win their second game of the day. And well, would you believe it? TSM go 2 0 today with a substitute. It's 22 6 in kills. Congratulations to TSM finishing that one off with no casualties. Great showing by their sub, by the way, Wild Turtle. Impressive performance on his go to champion. Now, let's take a look at the standings. The numbers may have changed, but the standings stay the same. Of course, it is going to be Curse, top in the league. They're not playing this week, but they are still there at 12-2. and two. Dignitas picking up two wins yesterday and takes them 13-4. Team Solo mid with two wins yesterday, takes them 11-5, and five, stretching their lead over COG in fourth with 8-7. and seven. Meanwhile, on the bottom half, we have Vulcan, 6-10, and ten, Marn at 4-10, and ten, Complexity at 3-10, and ten, and GGU still dead last, 3-12. and 12. Now, here is what's on the menu for you today. Kicking things off, of course, it is going to be the rematch of the first game of the season. It's going to be Counter Logic Gaming versus Team Solo Mid. Then, it's finally time for the Battle of the Brothers. Clakey D is going to take on Nick Wu in a face-off of Marn versus Complexity. After that, Vulcan has their first game this week versus CLG. And finally, Dignitas will be looking to avenge their upset last, last week against Complexity. And just as a reminder, you can, of course, go and vote for the team that you think will win every match. Go to lowesports.com, click on Matches at the top right, and make your predictions now. So before we get into the games, let's discuss a few things. Uh, a few things we picked up from yesterday's games, really. There was there was some pretty pretty crazy games. There was a few new strategies uh -huh. in there. So what, what did we pick up from that? I mean, as a jungler, I definitely got to say, Nasus and Volibear finally migrating over to North America. I think it was only a matter of time. Diamond Prox really setting worldwide trends. And we've, we've picked them up now. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly moved on to it. And of course, the odd one he was talking about yesterday in the interview, how the junglers have had to uh -huh. basically move. They're, they're now the carries. Yeah. And a lot of these mixed damage sort of brutal Bruiser junglers have really started to shine. Um, you have to make a lot more plays in the jungle, and you have to carry a little bit harder, he was saying. So I think everybody really agrees with that, especially junglers like Saint. They're happy. And then we had Dignitas, their 2v1 mid. They've done that a lot, but they also added in the teleport Janna this time to spice it up a little. But besides that, there were no upsets, and it looks like everyone at home is paying attention. All the online votes were correct. Very, much, very good stuff. Of course, we did see at least support as well. It's yeah. the first time, I think, in North America North as well. America. Now we want to hear what you guys have to say. Our question for today is, if you could sub one North American LCS player onto your favorite team, who would it be and why? And you can find us on Twitter. We're at LOL Esports. Use the hashtag LCS, and we'll read your answers later in the show. So we have to take a short break, but when we come back, it's going to be time for our first match of the day. Counter Logic Gaming taking on Team Solo Mid. You absolutely don't want to miss this one.
Every time I've played Singe, like we've always underperformed in some area, it just made Singe kind of look bad. And when I look at everyone else's Singe compared to mine, it's just like, wow. They suck so much, but they can get away with it because it's just this champion. If they find out that I'm playing it, they're probably gonna ban it every time. But if they don't ban it, it's just going to be a massacre. It's a gonna massacre. be a massacre, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. As you just saw, it's time for Counter Logic Gaming versus Team Solo mid. The tier players are ready. They're all a little bit tense right now. This game, of course, is a rematch of the very first battle of the season. And well, it's really kind of the, the battle of the oldest rivals in League of Legends, if we go back oh, a long yeah. way from this one. This one really hits close to home for me. Yeah. I mean, these were like the first two League teams created, so of course they're going to have the longest standing rivalry. It just works so well. And last time they met, everyone was talking about CLG's seven ward opening for the longest time, yeah. just weeks after that. They played it so perfectly, and they, they were using some different champions back then, too. They had the, the Tarek Urgot duo lane, which we haven't seen really come back that much. Hotshot on Malphite will probably make a resurgence. We saw that yesterday. Yeah, and of course, Link played Syndra in that very first game. Link's first game for COG as well. Yeah, and the Syndra was a big impact on that early game as well. They were able to steal the blue buff over the wall. Everyone was like, oh, that was so annoying. Really good play by him. And he actually ended up going 5-0 and zero that game. So maybe they actually need Link to uh, go back to the Syndra as well. Yeah, and that man on the screen right there, he's <laughs> going to do something new this game, a new secret strategy. Yes. Counter Logic Gaming pulling out. He's going to use runes against TSM. They've actually tweeted it already, though, so they gave up their secret plan. Now, <laughs> now TSM knows Hotshot will have runes this time around. But they started off the week 0-1, and one, so not the best start. It was against Dignitas, which is a hard matchup. And TSM had a little bit people would consider easier matches versus Complexity and Marn. They, go, they went 2-0, so it's a little bit of a momentum change here between the two teams going into this. Yeah, so uh, now these two teams, they scream at each other a lot, really. They're pretty much always placing each other. Cause like we always say, they, you know, they're always, uh -huh. always against each other. But as, you, as you're maybe about to see, knowing, that early, knowing your opponent, every move is not always an advantage. CLG has always been our toughest opponent. It doesn't matter how strong they've been. Overall, uh, especially in scrims, we just dominate them at all points in the game. We've scrimmed them a lot recently, and their, sim their play styles are very similar to ours. They've been copying like everything we've been playing. They are one of the few teams that we are kind of scared in a way to play against them, just because we know we have a 50-50 sort of chance. We literally just mirror each other. We can figure out how we can beat CLG and play extremely well, and that's all we need to do against CLG. They're a good team, no doubt, but they just, they're just copying us straight up. Ooh, big straight words, up, straight, straight up, up copy. copy. Wow, we'll <laughs> see how that works. You guys have been going over to LOL Esports and voting for who you think will win today. Of course, the viewers at home have spoken, and TSM is favored with the win for this match. 69% of the fans have voted that they will take it. It's pretty big, actually. Mm, that's pretty big. Of course, now let's check out the lineups. It is going to be CLG on the blue side at the top lane. It is going to be Hotshot GG, of course, making them big calls. Chouster in the jungle, Link in the mid lane, Doublelift and Aframu as the duos. And on the red side, we have TSM, Dyrus up top, Odwin in the jungle, Reggie middle, Wild Turtle now on AD and X Special supporting him. And doesn't Wild Turtle just look so happy in that <laughs> He always seems happy. It's kind of like that Kiwi Kid thing where they're sort of a new player and they're just always smiling. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this game, of course, has been a, a featured matchup of the day. And why not? Because it is going to be a battle of the two AD carries, Double Lift and Wild Turtle, the new man, and still with a big grin on his face. <laughs> yeah, speaking of Wild Turtle, he went 3-0 and zero at the MLG Dallas Challenger tournament on Draven. And then when he got Draven yesterday in the LCS, he's won and zero on it, so I don't know. Since Double Lift has been trash talking that champion, he doesn't think it's a very strong AD champion. But Wild Turtle has really been performing on it. Maybe CLG will just give it to them. Maybe they'll actually ban it out, and the rest of CLG will overrule Double Lift. We'll have to see. He's definitely a person that doesn't like to mince his words. I think it's safe <laughs> to say Double Lift. Definitely a war of words on Twitter yesterday. Of course, we're going to be going in towards Champion Select shortly, but. What are we thinking here between these two? Do we think Draven's really going to be banned? What are we, we going to aim for? We saw Dyrus talking about his singe there. We talk, saw them both playing 
Malphite was. Yes, they both hotshot yeah. and Dyrus were playing Malphite. We have got the bands about to start, and there straight away after Dyrus talks about it, <laughs> his band. So they don't let him have it. He did talk about how he hadn't been performing as well as he usually does on it, and so the rest of CLG, like you said, they play against him so much, they know Darius is a better player than he's been posting, and, so... And do we think, really, that actually TSM may go... They're, they're banned out Vayne already. Shen's still being yeah. taken away. Do you think they're going to aim for basically take Caitlyn away? Because there's been a lot of talk of you take Vayne and Caitlyn away <laughs> from double lift, and what else has he got left? Well... A lot of people forgot that he did like a DPS Urgot thing. We talked about yeah, earlier, like, earlier in the course. show. They could actually go back to that because there there haven't been any like recent balance changes to Urgot. Mm -hmm. He's he's still very strong. Um, it doesn't really fit CLG style of protect double lift. We only have two threats thing that everybody's been on about, but maybe they want to switch it up. Did he play at any game outside of this first match? I mean, I know he used to play in Korea when, he, when they were in the yeah, OGN, he played but it did a lot. he play any more in the NA A lot LCS? in Korea. I don't know if he played any more in the LCS. It was definitely Marn used it a few times. Yeah, and that's so how they, they got into it the It kind of reminded basically. them. They're like, oh yeah, Urgot. We can just play like <laughs> bully any well. lane with that. So, so that would be something that they might want to send back to, but it looks like the Renekton and Shen band is going to follow that up. So they're all going with these, these uh, top lane bands. They want to ban out Dyrus, it looks like. Yeah, Tarek, the final ban, of course, being taken out. The picks mm -hmm. and bans getting in the way. What will the first pick be here? What are we thinking they're going to aim for? We have saw Malphite yesterday. Elise is available. There's a lot of champions out there that they could choose. That Caitlyn that you talked about is up, and Vayne's already banned out. So if Double Lift only feels comfortable on those two right now, because those are the only two he's been recently practicing, then I'd expect them to grab a Caitlyn right now. But this is CLG, and they do have uh, sneaky strategies, usually panned specifically for TSM. So this could be anything. Like maybe we'll see Hotshot want some redemption on Galio. <laughs> maybe Control that just going to throw that one better. out there as well. Maybe <laughs> Malfoy, who knows? Of course, we will begin picks and bands showed to you guys on the screen in a moment. Obviously, there's an image, an issue, which is why you can see how beautiful, lovely face is. Well, not so much mine, but look at Kobe. <laughs> Isn't he beautiful? <laughs> <laughs> we are going to things, and oh, the first pick comes in. It's Jarvan, of yeah. course. How do we? How do we not count he's, for that one? He's one of the main bruisers. We're talking about these bruiser junglers that have become so popular. Vi was nerfed. Shinsao was nerfed. Jarvan hasn't been nerfed that hard yet. I mean, on live. He doesn't have the armor aura from his flag, but this is not the live patch. This is before oh the armor aura nerf. Word. So he still, yeah, he still has that. Meanwhile, we saw okay, no, this is they're gonna remake the lobby. But if you guys wanted a little sneak peek of the two first picks, it was Thresh and Draven, which is one of my favorite lanes. I love Thresh in any aggressive duo lane because you get complete control over collecting all the souls. It just makes you feel so good when you get every single soul that pops up. And Draven is really the epitome of an aggressive bottom lane. Early on, he just bullies everyone with that huge attack steroid. And, and Nat was doing something earlier on that we probably won't get to see in this game, but I never even knew you could do it on Thresh because I've not played him that meant long length uh -huh. of time, but he double stacked. He'd gone post 250, gets the new little icon on there, <laughs> and you just keep on going. That's pretty funny when you always called it, uh, Engorged Soul or yeah, something, something like that. Like it's, gorged it's souls pretty, or something it's like, pretty yeah. good. That's a definitely a buff you want to see if you are Thresh. That's really in the very late games when you're having <laughs> yeah. a lot of fun. We'd be, we'd be possibly 70 minute games I think to try and reach that limits but you never know if Edward was here maybe he'd clock it up a bit quicker <laughs> who knows but uh, Champion Select will be getting underway in just a few moments we're obviously just having a few technical issues and of course getting that underway we need to see the game first guys so yeah. we're not going to start without it because who wants to miss TSM versus CLG of course if you are at home and you are watching tell your friends tell your mother tell your parents say hey this is esports <laughs> and this is a big game this is the oldest rivalry in League of Legends as it stands right now Counter Logic Gaming a team that really was placed in your heart a long time ago as one of the former junglers. It We've was. had another former jungler since then who's currently top of the league, St. Vicious on Curse uh -huh. now. Uh, what is CLG going to do? Because they're currently residing in fourth place in the league. How are they going to drag themselves up here? I mean, obviously beating TSM, it's a very good start for that. I mean, I don't know where they want to go from here. Maybe switching out their champ, their, their, um, their players so much isn't that good of an idea. They should probably stick with one core group. We've heard Gambit talk about this a mm. lot. A lot of these older teams, and, and EG now, they were talking about how it, it you get a little advantage from 
staying with the same roster the whole time. Surprise, surprise. This is a team game. You guys will play better together. And CLG are really known for just benching people. Bad performance, bench. And then you don't fit with hot shot, bench. Like, something's going to come up. <laughs> They're going to switch up the lineup. Uh, the, the irony is, of course, they're up against Team Solar Mid, who are currently undergo undergoing a roster change, potentially. It's only a substitute, only a temporary uh -huh. situation, but, you know, to change your main AD carry coming into a match against Counter Logic Gaming, your oldest rival, yeah. it's a big deal. It adds so much to this matchup, too. I'm sure everyone's looking forward to the drama. People yeah, just love the drama online. We all with, love drama. With Chaos talking and Double Lift talking to each other, they've, they've really been exchanging some fairly harsh words, mm. actually. So it's it'll be interesting to see if Double Lift crushes Wild Turtle. It'll kind of be good for Chaos because Chaos will be like, oh, you guys need me back because I would have done much better. But then it'll make Double Lift look good and Chaos will be like, oh, you, okay, you're actually pretty good. Yeah, you're <laughs> actually pretty good at this game, of course. It wouldn't be Murica without a bit of drama. <laughs> yes. But uh, we are getting things, and there you go. So there's the Javan pick. Draven was locked in, of course, and Thresh is also going to be locked in there. So next two picks going to be coming out from Counter Logic Gaming. Will it be Zed in the jungle? No, it won't Ooh. be. That would be a mid laner, possibly. Uh, could that be Link? Has Link I, pulled that one out I, before? He has, um, he has yeah. played Zed before. I loved Nick Wu's Zed. So yeah. we're a little bit spoiled in that we saw this amazing Zed play. I love that one where he just walks up, too, and double kills wild turtle egg special out of nowhere uh he did he does he uses the champion so well i like how he rushes the blade of the ruin king as well because item damage actually works with his death mark ultimate as well and so it doubles the effectiveness of that active on people it's a really strong combo so ezreal leona has been locked in as the duo lane for Ooh. counter logic gaming which does mean it's going to be Ezreal. He's a, question, a, a champion that he was questioned on, uh -huh. which he's going to be going for that one. We've seen a couple being picked up by Wild Turtle here. What's he going to settle for? Currently, Xin Zhao, the winged warrior, is uh, selected. Not quite the crazy winged warrior of Kale, <laughs> who is actually available in this game. So hasn't been selected mm -hmm. just yet. Rumble in that top lane. It's a champion that we've seen Dyrus on. Zed, like you mentioned. I mean, do you think they all kind of watched in second and went, damn, we need to learn this champion. A lot. There's not a lot of uh, jungle Zeds in North America right now, but a t top lane and mid lane, he is still super popular. I like him in the jungle just because in solo queue, you're like, mm. I'm taking all the farm, I'm going everywhere, and he clears waves so fast, you can do exactly that. It really is pretty much insects play style too. He likes to shove those towers early, and it works out well in this new meta. So with getting Zed and Shin Zhao, I'm going to have to say Shin Zhao is going to be the one in the jungle. Zed's going to be in one of those solo lanes. Probably Reggie, actually. Um, he's he's pretty happy with that Zed in the middle. I've seen him a lot in solo queue. So it suits his, I think you know, the that, aggressive playstyle he's always been known for. Yeah, I think that Dash will go a little bit more tanky champion. He hasn't played too many assassins in that top lane. Meanwhile, on CLG, anytime you have Leona, tower dives become an option. That's really part of her playstyle. Um, and so we'll have to see how aggressive Aphromoo can be and uh, if they're able to manage that tower aggro well. Hmm. Holding off over a couple of APs here. They have locked in Karthus. We'll see how that works. They've oh, locked in both. Oriana as well. Okay. So that means it's going to be a double AP strat coming out from Canalonja Gaming, which does surprise me once they went for Jarvan. So I think they're going to pull some switches around in the lanes mm. here. Probably going to have uh, Karthus going 1v2 maybe. Um, he's They've actually done that a lot. And he's pretty good at farming from a, a long ways away. He can't really defend against tower dives, though. It's kind of his weakness. He's really squishy early, especially if you build mana like um, Marn were doing when they kept picking him. So you ha definitely have to watch out for that. If the jungler roams down early, too, they can make an easy dive on Karthus for a first blood. After he dies, of course, he can still put out the damage because of his passive. So there's a little trade off there. Hmm, so surprising that Spike Kale being allowed through hasn't been banned out. The most banned champion in the North American LCS <laughs> hasn't been picked yep. either. And it's Rumble, the final choice that came out from Dyrus. So the the Kale, it was interesting that she was the most banned because we said, what is a 38% win rate when yeah, she was picked, great. actually? Yeah. And that's because like a lot of these teams, if if they don't play her very well, they're just picking her anyway to, to like take it away from mainly Dignitas. Yeah. But both of these teams are like, okay, we, we don't know how to use her fully, so we're just going to stay away from that. But the interesting thing is Double Lift didn't pick Caitlyn. Caitlyn was available. So yes. everyone who is saying, you know, Double Lift only has two champions nowadays, looks like he considers Ezreal 
up there as well. But he may be thinking it towards Draven, or is he thinking he's yeah, going to be in a different lane? I mean, the fact that you pick Leona it's in there, you're going for a kill lane, surely. Yeah, I mean, it's there's so many options. I think that CLG are probably going to switch up the lanes because we have Hotshot on the Karthus with Teleport. Hotshot's a really big fan of 2v1 lanes. We actually used to do that way back 2010. Um, when I was playing, and um, Hotshot would always do Cho'Gath with Teleport. It was yeah. like, yeah, it'll be great. I can 2 vs 1, and then their 2 vs 1 won't be ready for it. So I'm, he's probably going to be um, going heads up right there. They don't want to have him versus Rumble. It's pretty hard. Rumble's very aggressive early, so Dyrus uh, probably would get the better of Hotshot, even if Hotshot uses runes. <laughs> <laughs> even if he does use runes. What are we seeing in forms of team fight potential here? Because obviously... With the Javan, with the Orianna, and diving in Cataclysm, pull the Shockwave Ball, he could really get them all lumped, lumped in towards mm -hmm. that Cataclysm area. They have a pretty good uh, ball delivery system that yes. we always talk about. Jarvan can get in there. Also, with Karthus, he always wants to be in the middle of a fight anyway, so that when he dies, he can keep his Defile up, keep that AoE damage around um, the rest of the team. So even if he could get in there, maybe with Flash in with the ball or something like that, they have a, a pretty good AoE-heavy uh, team here for late game. So it's, it looks pretty good for CLG. I'm interested to see how their lanes stack up. Well, we are about to get underway. You can see the screen behind us showing the game is underway and Counter Logic Gaming as the blue team and Team Solo Mid as the red are getting things underway. The second time they've met here and we are into week six. So they have another two meetings to come. And I believe next week is another clash of <laughs> titans between these two. But let's see how this one works out, of course. Counter Logic Gaming, they won despite not having runes on Hotshot last time around. Maybe that's a, a needle point for Team Solo Mid. Of course, Team Solo Mid using Wild Turtle, not Chaos this week. We'll see if that turns things around. Of course, that ball getting on towards the other one. Team Solo Mid, COG well aware <laughs> that they're invading, but they just well do aware. not care. They keep on throwing balls, flags, wards over the top. TSM continue with their invade. They know what they're doing, and they feel very confident in their level ones. And you can tell because Rumble aggressive early lane. Draven Thresh, aggressive early lane. That's going to win. And Zed is kind of a 50-50, but he's got a red pot. So Zed also probably going to win his lane. Uh, they went for a very, very strong laning phase right here. Shin Sao can put out a lot of pressure early. All he needs is a, his audacious charge and his talent strike, and he can, he can pull off a successful gank. Well, they put that ward down and made sure that CLG knew they were putting that ward down on the blue. Trying to see whether any pink wards would get thrown towards it, but they're not anything crazy coming out between these two. You can see Reginald has started out with that Fortitude Potion, whereas Crystalline Flask for Link. We'll see whether they do Ooh. face each other in that lane. And Counter Logic late Gaming, invading. well, they're going for a late invade here. So there's a ward at the blue buff bush. It's not very deep, but it should give them the vision that they need so that Wild Turtle and X Special don't get caught here. Reggie's going in towards Hotshot GG on that blue buff. He's going to sneak around. He knows it's still only one there. Oh, yeah. Reggie passed by that ward. That's going to warn him. They're going to back straight away. So that was a really good ward by TSM because they know that Hotshot is going for that 2v1. Um, he, he was expecting a switch here from TSM. So TSM, not only do they not give them the 2 versus one and don't switch, they send Dyrus up there, but they also deny that blue buff, which would help Hotshot lane against Rumble. Now it's going to be fairly hard for him. Hotshot's just going to try and farm from far away here with the lay waste because, like I said, Rumble can put out so much damage early with just a couple of spells. He's going to be very careful he doesn't get caught out by some of those harpoons. The old one, of course, trying to redirect around the ward, immediately gets pinged out. They know he's going there. Reginald passes by as well, so fully visible to counter logic gaming right now and they're saying whoa they might be going towards the tribush hotshot you have to be ready and waiting to get the heck out of there hotshot is still level one so if they do this tower dive reggie level three going they're for going it. for it but they're going for it down the bottom as well afro move is going to go down first blood comes out it's wild turtle that picked it up and now the top lane they're diving up towards hotshot g reginald's going to pick that up and the tower aggro <laughs> didn't even get near him beautifully paid by team solar mid top and bottom simultaneous three minute ganks right here. This is a new thing, like people say TSM does not innovate. Everyone had been doing the early three minute tower dive. Okay, so that's not anything new, but they did it both sides here. And then again, double lift now gonna go down. He's gonna go down, one more hit. It's a special that picks it up and that's both the duo laners taken out there. 
by the double lane, the new duo lane of Team Solo Mid. They are losing a lot of health on towards that mid turret. They're going to pick up the blue buff, take that away, and it is going to be the odd one that smites that one. So taking it off from Hotshot GG, who has only just hit that level two. So mid turret taken down half health. And yeah, so CLG tried to answer right there by taking out this middle turret. They had Jarvan over there, put as much damage as he could, but TSM, huge lead right now because they weren't able wow. to finish off the turret after move, taking a lot of damage even under the turret. You can tell Wild Turl's aggressive playstyle has really infected the rest of TSM. They're all feeding off his energy. It seems to be working very well. The fact that he's got that one kill, one assist is going to help them hugely in that bottom lane. Hotshot GG back in his top, trying to keep them layways up to level three, but you can see already he's a level behind on Darius. He's only just hit three, and Reggie going for it again. And also, we have to note, Choster went over the Dragon Wall down bottom. We didn't look at that. Reggie going in for Hotshot once again. Like I said, the early tower dives. Tower aggro, very well educated there, working it nicely, Hotshot. And Reginald's still not getting hit by the tower. You can see Dyrus was just working it, tanking out that tower damage. The last hit's going to come in towards Reginald. He's not going to take him down, and he backs off again. Great tower aggro management right there, and I said it in the beginning. Uh, like, you could just dive over and over uh, Karthus because he's so squishy early game. TSM not giving up anything here. The middle turret might go down if they can scare off the odd one. No. Nope, nope. Odd one's going to come in and keep them off that turret. Of course, Chowster and Link, it's, it's affecting their entire game. Link obviously going to continue on trying to farm out, and it is working for him. He's got double the farm of Reginald, but Reginald already got that kill and assist. The odd one doing what he can to protect this turret right now. Chowster has also been interrupted. You can see he's only got that 9 CS so far. He's fallen behind the odd one, and the odd one's also picked up the kill as well. So as it stands, massive lead being built up by Team Solo mid. Can they snowball it just like Dignitas did against CLG yesterday? Here we go. We have Aphromoo going in for a kill. Going straight in. It's going to be Aphromoo tanking up that turret. He went for the kill lane, but he gets pulled in by X Special. It's Aphromoo that's going to go down, but could double lift turn this one around. One more hit, and you can see the power. Oh! The barrier oh! works out. It's a double kill for Wild Turtle. <laughs> Outplayed. Very nice there. They do get the advantage. And now Wild Turtle also gets free farm down here. The CS lead is even more. I like the ironic grin on Double face as that <laughs> happened. He's just like, yeah, yeah, got me. that just happened. You got me with the barrier. Very of course, well he had played. used it in the first play. Chowster sitting around this mid lane, but Reginald, he's going to be so hard to pin down. He's still got flash available. And in itself, you know, it's just such a slippery character in Zed. And there you go. Look at that. Didn't need to burn flash. Didn't need to burn anything. Just pops away. So props to Wild Turtle for, for playing well right there, but also you have to shout out X Special. I mean, the Thresh hooks just being so key, getting them that early early lead down there. Two kills were set up by him. Very nice. And the repeated pressure onto Hotshot. After they burn his flash, they burn his teleport, they went up there again and really set him behind. So now Dyrus can just run oh, all over that top lane. Look at that. He's returning to lane with a BF sword and double Dorans. That is going to spell danger for double lift. He's got the Vampiric Scepter, but that lifesteal is not going to help when there's a BF sword bouncing <laughs> off his noggin and really forcing him back. As it stands, though, you can see, look at this tower. It's taking the damage. Hotshot is going to be able to farm. He's had that past that horrible, scary moment of being completely farmed out of the game. Or has he? <laughs> Again, odd one returning to this top lane. Hotshot does have his flash up now, though. Well, double lift and Afromu. They know they really need to get some farm going. Afromu, uh, the odd one is passing by a ward. So Hotshot already aware and saying, oh, I need to start backing off very quickly here. Mm -hmm. And I think this time around, TSM are going to be happy to take the turret rather than Hotshot. Yeah, after a point, um, you know, the gold just decreases and decreases if you kill him over and over. It's only two deaths right now, so not too bad. Hotshot's still worth a decent amount of gold, but the turret going to provide a lot more of an advantage. And they actually need Reggie to uh, stay mid a little bit more now so he doesn't get too far behind in the CS. He made it, He made them um, get a great lead in top, and it was only at the cost of even around, you know, 20 CS or so. So they'll definitely take that one, but he can't fall too far behind. Yeah, there is Dyrus and the odd one working down the turret. That's going to be the first turret of the game. They should take it this way. You can see the Siege Minion quite happily tanking out the damage. So, big gold advantage build in here. It's a 4,000 gold lead nearly already by Team Solo mid. We do see Chowster heading down the bottom. They need to try and level out this bottom lane if they can. So it'll be interesting to see if they can actually turn this one around. 
Oh, he's going to walk straight in there. That's going to be the ultimate coming out from Hotshot as well. Wild Turtle taking low with the Slanton's not quite enough. And Chouster tried to slide through. Expression couldn't quite catch on. Nice thought from TSM, but a good revenge kill from Team Solo mid there. It does give a big chunk of gold back to Double Lift. Yeah, that was a good try. Exactly how you're supposed to play the escapes with Thresh. Send your AD carry one way. Draven has no escape of his own. Tried to make use of the Lantern. Couldn't quite get it there because there's too much damage and a nice stun from Leona. Able to lock him up long enough. So let's have a look towards his top lane. We can see Hotshot did just pull out that Requiem. That gave him the assist kill. He has, of course, had to go with the cloth armor. Despite the fact he is technically up against an AP champion, that's mainly for the fact that Reginald and the Odd One have been coming in and beating him around the backside with their long poles. And here comes Dyrus coming around the side again. Getting in towards that blue buff. They have the timer because they took it the first time around. And Hotshot really needs this one. If they can go... Oh, oh he couldn't try and steal it. Yes, he did. I think he got it with the no. equalizer. No, wow. Link uh, came Link around and got, got it. it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that was really uh, ballsy there by Chaster, I have to say. Uh, still going to keep going for it. He actually used his smite to go for Dragon. And Link got it. Now that they know his, his smite is down, there's no threat to steal. So that at least they got information out of that. He wasn't a successful steal by Dyrus, but... They force Chas to use his smite, and they go grab that dragon. This is going to keep that gold lead stretching further and further. Dyrus farming out a great big wave as well in this top lane. That's going to give him a bigger advantage over Hotshot GG right now. 64 CS already. You can see building up nearly a 20 CS advantage, surpassing a 20 CS advantage. So that haunting, guys. Catalyst of the Prector just being picked up by Link, meanwhile, in that mid lane. He's the only shining light, and that's only because Reginald's kind of been disappearing off to help pick up those kills and assists. And yeah. now he's going to be driving on towards that turret. The big difference here, I feel, is the fact that there isn't a great deal of AP damage coming out from TSM. Maybe, maybe COG can tank the armor away from this. Uh huh. I mean, Dyrus is going to be doing good percentage damage. Hopefully, he'll upgrade that Haunting Guys into a Leandris, and then that can that can take everybody down since it does max health damage. Ooh, nice oh. counter there by Expecial. Brilliant, and the ultimate completely missing out, but here comes Hotstar GG, has teleported in there, and you can see like, Wild Turtle, he knows he's got the Lantern to click, he's to try and get away from this one, taking his time to go for it, and here comes Chouster, is it the right time? Yes, the Cataclysm lands, beautifully played Ooh. there, and it's Double Lift that picks up one and two, and it's a beautiful double kill for Double Lift. Chouster catches both of them in the Cataclysm right there, a little bit of a misstep walking right next to each other after Wild Turtle just used his flash. But that's great news for, T uh, for CLG. They're going to also push on this turret and try and take it despite Reggie's best efforts. So they are going to drive forward though in this mid lane. And look at this. I don't think Link can do a great deal about this one. The odd one's got aggressive three talent strike. Flash is in there. Equalizer comes out. The shockwave oh. misses. And Dyrus goes in to finish the job. And that was a great kill by that pair. And that is also going to be the mid lane turret. Yeah, they also made Link look a little silly right there. That shockwave might uh, might be on the blooper reel. Yeah, it's not always good. And the, the thing with the shockwave is, because it was so heavily played during the Season 2 Finals, uh -huh. everybody learned when it's going <laughs> to happen. Yeah. Great play right there. Regardless, though, they actually trade middle for bottom. So even though Wild Turtle and Expecial did get caught out, they were able to answer back, getting Link and the middle turret. TSM still with a very nice lead here. They need to keep up this aggression because their team comp really shines in the early stages. We do see X Special going around. He's warding out the bushes there. Wild Turtle switch to the top. Reginald going aggressive and taking down Hotshot GG beyond the tower. Aframu is going to come in, but I don't think he can catch on or do anything to Reginald. So Reginald just went so deep and aggressive as he <laughs> has been known for in the past. And that's building up his gold. He's got an 800 gold lead over Link, despite the fact he was behind in CS. He's regained all of that. And you can see it's just a 4 CS difference between the two. Yeah, good job by him. He used his Bilgewater Cutlass too. Like I said before, if you put the death mark on, any additional damage from items or spells von Zed is going to double up right there. And now we have CLG pushing on, on this mid turret. It's probably going to go down really weak already. But Dyrus comes to save the day. They're collapsing on this one. TSM and one moving in for this one. The odd one tries to keep the poke on there. Here comes X Special around the side. Will he land the hook on towards anyone? Is he even going to try? No, just forces them away from the turret, holds it off. Not for much longer, but Wild Turtle's getting all his free farm at the top lane. 
and it does mean that Double Lift he's been left solo against Reginald. Yeah, and they're gonna have five members of CLG come to finish off this turret. It could be dangerous if TSM wants to stick around because they only have three. Wild Turtle still top. He's gonna be pushing. Yeah, they're gonna lose this turret. I don't think there's anything they can do about it. Hotshot finally finishes off the job, but they are leaving Wild Turtle alone a little bit too long here. Maybe as Draven Bloodthirster will be ready. You can see Bloodthirster has already been built up by Double Lift. Those double kills he got really have helped him so dramatically after that start lead that, uh, that Wild Turtle had managed to build up against him. What else are we seeing across the board? Obviously the Bilge World of Cuddle is picked up. He's going to go for the Blade of the Rune King. Anything else that's really standing out between these teams? Uh, I'm just happy that Dyrus built a little defense on Rumble. I've seen so many Rumbles build all offense and then just get blown up. Like when Link flashes in to try and land a Harpoon, you're a melee and you can't get that close without building any defense. So he can turn that Giant's Belt also into Riley's Crystal Scepter, which will work really well with his Leandries that he'll eventually get. Uh, nice beginning builds there for Rumble, and I like, especially here, along with the odd one and Dyrus just waiting, using Reggie as bait. There is going to be four members down here of Counter Logic Gaming. They're all coming along through the jungle. It's going to be a straight up 4v4. They will see it. Yeah, they pinged it, and they're aware of it, and immediately. TSM do back away from the fight. Yep. There could be a Warmonks as well, actually. He's got that uh, Regrowth Pendant. Maybe we'll see That's what Dyrus goes towards. Wild Turtle going back up towards the top against Hotshot. Let's see if he goes aggressive up here. He may well do. But no, Hotshot is going to back away and put a ward down, I guess. Maybe just be a little bit more defensive. It was actually pretty good that TSM backed off right there for CLG because uh, Hotshot's teleport wasn't up. Hotshot was doing his Hotshot style where he's split pushing, but his teleport wasn't actually ready. It's, a lot of times you can actually bluff that your summoner spells are up because a lot of the North American teams not quite as good as the Koreans at timing all of those summoner spells, so they're not quite sure when it's going to be back up or not. And if you're a hot shot, you just pretty much always split push, Ooh. so you're always showing the exact Reginald's same Reginald's picked this one, but you can see Link's already picked it up. There came the ultimate from Wild Turtle to try and get the steal spinning past down the map there, and Reginald He's continuing to Ooh. track Link here. He may well go aggressive. You can see he pulls the wolves there. That's going to be Wild Turtle. Reginald didn't manage to pick anyone up. And the farming continues. So, 8-4 currently the kill score. And, well, you can see that gold lead has not really closed much more. It still remained at 4,000. 3-2 in turrets. Two teams solo mid after a fantastic start. But CLG have definitely clawed the way back into this one nicely. Yeah, and they also have Link rushing the Rod of Ages, so at 25 minutes or so, it's going to be fully stacked. They're going to have to wait a little bit longer for that to get um, quite as powerful as you need. It looks like Hotshot probably working on that Arm Guard, going to go for Azania's maybe, um, trying to try and get a little bit more tanky since he was dove so much early. He really is, uh, is very squishy. So we could well see whether COG, are they going to fight for this? I'd be amazed if they do. They generally don't go near it. And it does look like it's going to be Team Solo Mid that pick up themselves another dragon. That stretches that gold lead to 5.5k as well. And Reginald going aggressive on Link here. Can he dive into it? He's going for the ultimate. Puts the death mark down. And then the shockwave comes out as well as the exhaust. Reggie might Ooh. be able to finish it. The equalizer comes down. Link has to flash away from this one. Reggie has got the gap closer. Hasn't got flash available just yet. But instead, he is going to be forced to back away. And that means TSM are going to push it towards the mid turret. Yep, they special did miss one hook right there, but he still was able to force Chaster's flash, bringing him back with the play, so it wasn't too bad. Double lift finished up farming bottom, and now he's going to come middle. His Bloodthirster right now is fully charged, so he's he's ready to fight. He's ready for action. Reginald going back towards the top. That play of the Rune King he built pretty early on as well, and he's really keeping up that CS farm, continuing to push. And TSM are actually exchanging, really, who gets all the farm. Aframu picking up a couple of CS set from Hotshot <laughs> GG. I'm not sure if that was planned or not, but the shield popped, and that's what he got. Yep, that's going to do pretty pretty good work, actually. The supports now, getting money is not ever a bad thing for anyone on your team. You can spread it around. You can see the Ace of the Legion actually completed on Shin Sao, so maybe they'll have Aframu pick up a different aura item. You usually want to have uh, at least two. Uh, it just helps out in the team fight so much, and that, that's a huge item to be completed now that everyone is grouping up. Great stage in the game for that as CLG oh, head for top. They've pinged it. They're going straight bottom. This, they're going to rush down. So CLG are going to go straight towards that top turret. You can see and they're all backing away. They've realized it, but they're going to be too late. That inner turret is going to go down. TSM are going to get on it way quicker than they can back. They're all going to rush back down there. They've got a wave of minions with them as well, so that's going to be a turret gained by Team Solar Mid just through 
Great positioning. So they don't have any home guard boots yet. It's so early in the game that there's only two people with even level two boots upgraded on CLG right now. And double lift stayed Ooh. to split push a little bit long up there in top. So this is four and five. The hook just missing out there. They're all very close for that shockwave. They're going aggressive though. There's the shockwave. Doesn't matter. The damage is already done. Reginald goes in. Wild Turtle picks up one. Wild Turtle picks up two. You can see that's another kill. Requiem will do nothing. And Team Solo mid step off to the side. It's a four for zero exchange for Team Solo mid in the base. They're going to be the true shot barrage from Doublelift. Can he do anything? Wild Turtle wants a piece of him just off the bottom of the screen. He's keeping him at bay and Doublelift can't fight this one. And there is the inhibitor turret going down and the inhibitor at 18 and a half minutes. There's still aggressive TSM not giving CLG any room to breathe. Like I said, Doublelift stayed to push that left Wait, uh, the last wave top, so he was not even there for that fight. They didn't expect this out of TSM. They're not usually ones to dive an inhibitor turret at 18 minutes, so definitely catching CLG off guard, showing some some new plays here from TSM. Maybe with the, the influx of a new AD carry, they're pulling out some new plays. Well, it may be the new thing that's required, kind of like a new manager coming into a team and everybody's got a perk and they all want to go for it, but CLG may be going to try and counter this and go for a very Quick Baron, can they get on towards this? 19 minutes in, but TSM, they're already back. They've already been back to buy, and they're coming back to fight. There's a ward in there, so they know, and I love the timing from that last fight too, because like I said, they just finished that Aegis of the Legion. Helps out so much with dives. You can see right now, CLG, oh, they're can't burst it down. Reginald thought about going for that one. Pink Ward was thrown out by the odd one, but they didn't bother pursuing. They're still continuing though. They're gonna go towards that top inner turret. I just love this new face of TSM. They picked all very <laughs> aggressive champions. I was saying at the beginning, those are lane-winning champions, and they've continued to just steamroll their advantage. They are going to steamroll through because Wild Turtle, now with that Phantom Dancer, dodges out of the True Shot Barrage. He's going to have plenty of speed to take down this turret, working it hard. COG going to come out, try and force him away as that wave clear does go down. And TSM forced to wait just another wave, but I don't think there's a great deal that COG are going to be able to do about this one. Bottom wave, that's going to push itself down. It's starting to stack up pretty hugely there, and you can see TSM just going to get another couple of hits on the turret. Slowly but surely, they're grinding it down. Yeah. With the middle inhibitor down, that actually gives side lane creeps 100 extra HP. So that's going to help them shove this top as well as just passively shove that bottom lane. If they just wait long enough, then they're going to get small advantage. Reggie going deep here. Super minions coming through the mid lane. Reginald trying to catch out around the side, and he's gone aggressive. He's dived in his Afro move. The death mark's been used on him. That shield will get popped. <laughs> he's going to go down from this one, and Reggie picks up another one. He's 4 0 3 now on Zed. Reggie really making a case for the MVP right here. He's been roaming all all game, early game, got that them that lead in top, and he didn't give up too much CS in the middle, was able to defend his middle turret for long enough for them to last through the mid game. Now they're again on the second inhibitor turret as Reggie pushes down middle. He's forcing those super minions to come along. The bottom turret now has got a huge stack on it from the inner turret. Let's see whether TSM are going to rotate round and go for that one and keep the pressure on towards this inhibitor. No, they're not. They're going to go and steal away the blue buff. They could also turn to Baron here. Yeah, and Reggie going to go. Looks like he wants to put some more damage on the bottom outer turret over here while the rest of TSM are taking that blue buff that you're talking about. And Oracle's all ready for X special means that they can continue to clear out the Baron vision and force CLG to a bad spot. You can see here they're already worried about it, so they're sneaking over there. They're sneaking, they're going aggressive on X-Special. I don't think they realize the rest of TSM are here, but Reggie's away from this one. The ultimate comes out from X-Special, and that just completely boxes off CLG. They can't chase this one down. Wild Turtley's off in the tri push at the side, but Reggie's sneaking in the back door. <laughs> oh, they really did a great job of kiting right there. The slows from X-Special and Dyer's doing a lot of work. Now CLG are being forced back. They him. can't recall. They can't recall because you can see Dyer's is keeping the harpoons back on towards Hotshot. They're desperately coming around for this one. And look at Reggie, he's just beaten down the Nexus turrets while the rest of the team, the Equalizer, comes out from Dyrus. And now finally CLG get back in position, but already half the hit points down. And now they're losing another inhibitor. Team Solo mid are just maneuvering them around here. Dyrus gets caught out by the Cataclysm. Oh. Is there going to be enough damage? No, because he grabs the Lantern. Next special says, see ya, I'm out of here. Wild Turtles on the front lines right now, just fending off the entirety of CLG. This turret only got one more hit left. 
TSM are, are just crushing this. Reggie died to the turret there and amongst that, there's so <laughs> that crazy yeah. action. They are going to take the inhibitor turret down. I don't think they're going to go for the inhibitor. They get called back while Turtle wanted to stay around, <laughs> playing with a grin on his face still. Look at that. He is loving his debut against Counter Logic Gaming on TSM here. And CLG are being pushed and maneuvered by TSM all around the map. Again, they're going to try and come out. They want to try and force his Baron. They're stopping TSM going back again. Yeah, so they want to at least put the threat of it there so that they can keep TSM around. Baron does so much damage right now, though. It's going to be very dangerous for CLG. This is a desperation play. They could get caught out right here while Turtle's still there. Well, they know that Dyrus' equalizer is down, so they realize you don't have to worry about that. Reggie was killed. He's going to start heading back in there. Hotshot's taken row low already, and the flame spitter from Dyrus just poking on towards the back of Hotshot's coat there, and he's just tugging away. The Dab Baron down to half health. They're oh, committed God. for this one, and this is going to be a Massacre for Team Solo mid. There goes the odd one. Picks up a double. Pin. That's going to be another pickup. Reggie, sorry, Hotshot will pick up a kill with that Requiem. The Baron does go down. It was Chowster that got it. But Reginald comes in. Wild Turtle gets a double kill. And they're going to turn and take the game. <laughs> Oh, the funniest part of that, I thought Chaucer was going to repeat his mistake um, of last week where he just left the Baron pit and then the other team stole it, but he flashed back in over to steal the Baron. CLG at least gets the Baron kill, but they've been aced and, and there the is surrender. the surrender. So that is, ladies and gentlemen, a 23 minute, 40 second win for Team Solo mid over Counter Logic Game and a great debut for Wild Turtle as well, starting off in that bottom lane so Dramastic, dramatically, dramatically. <laughs> it's a bit of a mix of everything, really, really there. And Hotshot GG this time around, pulling out Carthus on that top lane. It didn't work out. I mean, they knew that they were oh, going to get the two, two plus I mean, three tower dive at three minutes. That's what they've all been doing against each other. And they said, you know, they're copying each other's strats, so they knew what was coming. Uh huh. But picking Carthus into that, surely that's it's the worst to be dived with. I mean, I thought, uh, exactly, I was saying it at the beginning, I was yeah. like, he's, he's really squishy early. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what they're going to do with this. So interesting to see how their lanes matched up. Didn't work out for CLG. They picked a lot of like very weak early game chance, and TSM went the complete opposite. Their bottom lane won that by themselves. Thresh and Draven got that kill at the same time. They got first blood before the three-minute tower dive even took effect. So both sides of the map winning. Once you see that, it's mm. it's just heart crushing for CLG in the game. That's got to be demoralizing, and they could not claw their way back. And really, if you look at it, all the all the picks they took were full on aggression. It suited the new TSM, as you were calling them, with Wild Turtle in there. KX, of course, will be watching this and thinking, OK, I, I see what I've got to do. I know I need to up my game in this area. And it's really the attitude. It's not his skill that's being questioned at all about this one. It's the attitude. And you saw the attitude of Wild Turtle there. The grin on his face the entire time in that game. Plus, uh, I think that's a point for Draven in the Draven versus double lift debate. <laughs> I don't know who's keeping track of the score here, but that's definitely a point for Draven. I'm pretty sure the internet <laughs> are keeping track of that score yeah. for everyone, I think it is, of course. So, coming up next, we're going to have an interview. It's going to be with Dyrus from TSM, and then it's time for our next match. It's going to be Marn taking on Complexity. We'll be back in just a few minutes.